This video contains spoilers for Gotham Season 5 Episode 7 Ace Chemicals. Enjoy. Okay, as I record this, it's completely unscripted. It's morning, I've just caught up with Gotham. I've just watched Season 5 Episode 7, I think, Ace Chemicals. Um, Jeremiah Valeska's final appearance in the show. Whatever we see from now on is a new character, as insisted by showrunners and producers. So let's go straight into this and have a little talk about it, and I can give you my immediate reactions. Sorry, there won't be much editing or anything going on here. I just want to get this up as quickly as possible. So that was definitely the best episode in a while. That was the best of season five. I thought it was actually, yeah, it, it was better than I was expecting. I'd seen previous appearances from Jeremiah this season, and I'd come to the conclusion that they're basically given everything away in the trailers and the promo material. And I still insist they gave much too much away. I'm still wholly disappointed, generally, by the way this character's been treated this season. But at the same time... I'll take it. This was this was a good conclusion. They didn't show everything. Not everything was given away, but I think I think showing too much in the trailers really harmed the experience for me, to be honest, because there were a lot of uh, things that felt like they were supposed to be intriguing questions that were given away, such as Mad Hatter's involvement uh, at Ace Chemicals and the hypnotism and everything. There were a few moments that certainly. Uh, you know, they, they diverted my expectations a little bit in that I thought they were going to go down the whole mystery of Bruce's parents route for the entirety of the episode, but they didn't. They, they nipped that in the bud pretty quickly. And uh, Jeremiah's plan was a really cool plan, actually. I, I liked that he was trying to drive Gotham further away from getting back to normality and everything in setting up this gas and how it seemed like it was well within reach. You know, at the beginning of the episode, they kind of established that provided nothing goes wrong in Gotham for a little bit, they can, you know, get back to reality. But then Jeremiah pulls this, and suddenly we're right back to square one, and I could really feel Gordon's frustration towards the end of the episode. I think this episode very much had some of the best personal moments of this series. Um, because, like, we have the scene with Bruce and Alfred, after Alfred finally gets de-hypnotized, and I gotta say, I, I didn't notice it, but I think I've really missed Alfred this season. He hasn't appeared in it much, but in this episode we get a lot more of him. And, you know, seeing, like, seeing Bruce sat at the dinner table with his parents and uh, Jeremiah next to him is kind of like, whoa, that's, that's quite an image. Um, and I did enjoy the sort of dialogue exchanges between Bruce and Jeremiah during these scenes. I'd say they were certainly some of the highlight of the episode. And uh, one thing I did like was that the episode didn't spend too much time on other subplots this time. They got kind of straight to the point a little more. Uh, as in, like, you're never waiting too long for it to get going or to get on with the bits that you want to see, which is obviously uh, Jeremiah's plan play out. I think my favourite scene in the episode was certainly Jeremiah's remake of The Mark of Zorro, or The Mark of Madness as it's known now. Um, seeing him get playful and just, like, the way he's made this film was actually really funny. Um, I mean, I laughed a lot. I know it's meant to be kind of a disturbing sequence and everything, and yeah, I feel Bruce, but it's just... For, for that one moment... This is the first time Jeremiah's ever had this. I felt like I was kind of going along with Jeremiah's plan. I actually found it really fun. Um, which is what I've been waiting for since Jerome's death. So kudos there. They they did... They certainly did deliver what I was hoping to see in that sequence alone. Um, it's just a shame we didn't get to see more of that. I, I really loved when he was running away from Bruce as well, getting to Ace Chemicals and yelling f uh, for help from Echo and everything. And the final confrontation was good but very very short like the whole scene where they're having the fight at ace chemicals all of that apart from the ending was shown in the trailers so once again they've given away far too much but it was it was an okay confrontation i would not put it on par with the bruce v jerome circus fight with the hall of mirrors i think that scene is a masterpiece as far as Gotham is concerned. This does not live up to it uh, because of how quick and easy it sort of is, and I don't feel like it gives us as much of an impression of like character as the Bruce v. Jerome fight in Season 3 did, but it, it's still an exciting sequence, and I love the visuals of Ace Chemicals, like the green and everything, and how bright and vibrant it is. And um, I really love the sort of the stylistic filmmaking, especially of the opener where uh, Jeremiah's sort of wearing the hazmat suit and setting off the fireworks, and you see these guys just foaming at the mouth and everything. That's very Jokery. Um, yeah, I think we have laid down the groundwork for the Joker quite nicely in this episode. 
episode, I have to say. I'm certainly putting uh, my prejudices towards Jeremiah in regards to how he was presented in season four behind me for this one, because I think they did do a good job with the payoff. Um, and I really love the scene where we see him on the hospital bed. He looks really gross and yucky. And the bit where Bruce says there's no brain activity in there anymore. He's no longer a threat. That did make me laugh out loud. And I know it's supposed to because it's like cinematic irony. It's like, of course, of course, you idiot. Um, and the, yeah, like the, the pregnancy drama actually wasn't as bad as I was expecting. I mean, one thing I've been wanting to touch on actually that I haven't yet is that I'm actually very grateful for one thing. There is one major shark jump in season four that I was worried would have kind of a negative ripple effect on this season, where at the end of season four, uh, Barbara Keane says the enemy is men, basically, and they go on to become like a man-hating society. I'm so grateful we've just not gone with that. I'm grateful that that's been kind of put behind us. And I can totally understand why Lee Tompkins is losing some respect for Jim Gordon. Um... I mean, he he still made out with her in the end, though. So is Jim Gordon just a breed of this series? <laughs> like, is he going to have a baby with her, too? Man, Jim Gordon, dude, wrap up. You know, safety first. Um, uh, yeah, like, I was surprised to actually see a bit of Jeremiah post-chemical bath, really, because I thought what was going to happen was we'd assume him dead, and then in the finale, and after the 10-year time jump, we see him again. It's like, oh, who's this? You know, it's like, well, Jeremiah's dead. But um, I, I guess they just know the Joker's true identity in this version or something. I'm, I'm not sure. There's a lot of things that feel like they were done for the sake of connecting up canon and, you know, not worrying about plot holes. But at the same time, it feels like they're just kind of ignoring that potential, really. And that is a bit frustrating, but... Overall, the episode was fine. I, I don't... I, I'd say it's my favourite episode of season five and the best episode we've had in quite a while, but I wouldn't... I, I still don't put it up there with the greats, like the season two opener or the, the one of my three soups. I think that's probably my favourite episode of all time, really. Um, but it was still good, and I think they put the Mad Hatter to good use. They, they utilised their villains really well, and... I was actually very happy to see Mad Hatter again because there's been a few episodes where we haven't really got much of the outside B villains lately. They set it up in episode one with Mr. Freeze and Firefly and everybody, but like they just haven't shown them yet. And I don't know if we'll see them again now. I I'd imagine that we're going to focus on the Bane subplot from here on out, which I guess has given it breathing room. I'm just hoping they can find a way to connect this final chapter with the origin of the Batman well enough. Because I just worry that it's going to be like, okay, No Man's Land is over, suddenly, flash forward, oh, he's he's Batman now for some reason, and it's just kind of a showcase of the villains and everything, and it's just like, buy Batman comics at all good retailers. So, yeah, that's, that's overall my thoughts on Ace Chemicals, and I guess I'm feeling a little more confident now for the rest of the season. Um, I'm disappointed with how Jeremiah's been handled. I look forward to seeing him as the Joker. Um... I'm hopefully we'll be seeing that in the finale, or, like, enough of that, a sufficient amount anyway. Um, and, yeah, it, it was a satisfying episode, uh, certainly more so than previous ones, and I, I feel a bit more confident about the direction of Season 5 now. Um, I, I think it's always going to have a lot of missed opportunities in there, but I think that's part of what comes with the fact that this show would have been cancelled had it not been for this series. Um, so I'm, I'm still grateful, ultimately, that we didn't get the other potential outcome, which was total cancellation. Um, so yeah, they just, they, they've got to bring it all home now. They've got to have a nice resolution for the Bane thing. They've got to find a way for it to tie into the birth of the Batman. Um, I honestly expected the No Man's Land stuff to end a lot sooner than this, but I can see that this is like, they're really trying to make this the stage of which we set the Batman mythos now, which is an interesting choice. Um, but I think that that's just how they're going with it. And uh, yeah, it, it'll be kind of nice to see Gotham get back to normality soon, to be honest, because I feel like uh, one problem is it's kind of lost kind of that life now that it's gone full on apocalyptic. And there's a lot of characters that I am actually missing quite a bit, like Butch, for example. I miss the heck out of Butch. Um, and I've noticed that in the coming episode, we're set to see uh, the return of um, the ventriloquist, which I thought was cut out, but I guess is still in it. Um, there's a lot of misinformation going around on the internet. I doubt we're going to see Man Bat, but I'm actually glad that they've managed to follow through on that promise at the end of Season 4. It makes the whole thing a lot less jarring. So, 
yeah, I'm, I'm feeling better about Season 5 now, and I'm hoping that I can continue feeling good about this. Because it would be a really, sh uh, a really big shame uh, for this series to end in a way that wasn't satisfying after, you know, how much I've enjoyed it and everything. So, yeah, what, what did you think of the episode? Did you enjoy it? Are you enjoying Season 5? Uh, do you feel better about things now? Was there anything that disappointed you? Sound off in the comments below. Let's have a discussion. Let's make it a good, clean discussion. No abuse, no shade, no nothing like that. And I will catch you next video. Sorry about the lack of editing this time. Just a quick one. And I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. And as always, if you're new here, subscribe.